Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk. I'm your host, Andrew James, and today I'm pleased to have with us in studio via Zoom, Ms. Cheyenne Obermaller Walsh, former McKenzie High School student, year 1993 to 1998. It's been a long time. It's been, it's been years. It's nice to see you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic to see you, uh, Cheyenne, after so many years. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about yourself and what was your experience like at McKenzie High School, if you don't mind sharing with us? Well, I started McKenzie High School in 1993 to 1998. Um, I started in the Opal Stream. And then I went into the business stream. Um, so it, it's been, it, Mackenzie High School actually was, I think high school years are like the best years of your life. And I can tell you that, you know, I've had, I, I have fond memories and, you know, sharing class with so many great people. And I miss that. I miss my friends. Um, memories that I have there um, is, I remember when we had to um, host general assembly <laughs> mm -hmm. um you know preparing uh with jason alonzo and kino carroll and all of those guys it was so fun omiana hamilton niosi brown all of i mean everyone i can't call everyone's name but mm -hmm. those were good times um so <laughs> cheyenne it's it's so nice to see you still look the same way you even look much better yeah <laughs> you so many years. You're thank still you very good. much for the flattery <laughs> I think it's thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel great. <laughs> well, you look great as well. Can you tell us a little bit about how McKenzie School is preparing for the real life of work? And if you don't mind sharing with us what it is that you do for your current job? Sure. Um, I actually, so I, I am a business major. Um, and I, I actually, I met the love of my life. And mm. I have two beautiful kids. Aww. I actually, so I... My aunt was in the business uh, business stream, and I think I kind of like, you know, wanted to, to follow her footsteps. So that's why I, I decided on business management. And um, I'm currently a stay-at-home parent. And the reason why is because uh, my son is autistic. My son is on the autism spectrum. So I decided to leave my career to be a stay-at-home parent. It was supposed to be short, but um, you know, because of his needs, I had to make that decision to stay home. So, but I have um, my own business as well. So. Okay. Interesting. Um, I, I know a lot of people get scared when they are autism as there's a certain stigma attached to that word. Um, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, I, I'm sure there's going to be there, there, you know, there will be a lot of parents looking at potentially this video who, uh, might have a child that's, uh, on the spectrum. The word autism, what does it mean to you, if you don't mind sharing with us? Sure, and that's the thing, like, I am an open book when it comes to autism, and just, the reason why is because a lot of people, as you said, it, there's a stigma attached to it, and people, when they, they think of autism, you know, um, they, they think of it as a disability, and that's one word I, you know, the, People in the ASD community, they don't like to use that word. Um, it is actually, um, you know, it's, it's a, you say someone, you know, you refer to it as someone with special needs or they're differently able. Um, right. And in my case, my son is actually, um, he is high functioning. And high functioning means that he actually, he is, um, he's verbal. So there's different level of autism, um, and it, the spectrum is very wide. Um, so it's either you have Asperger's or you have uh, pervasive developmental disorder, and then there's pervas pervasive de developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, better known as PDD NOS, and that's what my son has. Um, it's an it you know it's a it actually is. Um, it affects your social skills. Um, mm. You have, you know, verbal and nonverbal communication, and there's also the social interaction part of it. So, you know, with my son, as I said, he's high functioning, and the reason why is because he is verbal. Um, or, or the, you know, or in the autism community, we say mild autism, mm. um, but it, he still has um, challenges, lots of challenges, actually. Mm. 
So. Fantastic. Thank you for being um, open with us and sharing. Um, just, I got a question right off the bat. Sure. You are a fantastic speaker. Um, oh, would, <laughs> would you be open to hosting a show uh, one day, if at all possible? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Actually, so the thing about it is that, you know, as I said, my son is autistic, and one of the things I wanted to do, you know, with me being a business major, I would like to become an attorney one day. Very and good. I actually want to become a special needs lawyer. And, you know, it, it'll probably, it'll give me practice if I do. Thanks, though. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So being an advocate for folks with in in need of accommodations. Correct, and that's what that's one of the things that you know issues that we had. Um, you know, when my son was diagnosed in 2014, we didn't know. You know, we were new to the this whole autism scene. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't mm. know. I mean, and the thing about it, it's, it's difficult. I'm not going to say that, you know, having a child with special needs, it's, it's a walk in the park. It's no walk in the park, let me tell you. It is, it is tough. Mm -hmm. And what I, I usually tell people is that you need support. You need lots of support. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I did. You know, later on, you know, I, I went after support. Um, so, you know, cause it, it, it takes a toll on you after a while. I mean, mm -hmm. because people think, again, as I said, there's a stigma and a lot of people, you know, their kids, you know, they're, they're on the spectrum. They, they see signs like us. We saw signs, the fidget, the fidgetiness, um, mm -hmm. you know, the repetition, echolalia, you know, if her son ask you ask her son, Hey, how was your day? He would say, Hey, how was your day? You mm -hmm. ask him, you know, like, um, the sky, you would say, the sky is blue today. What do you think? And he'd say, the sky is blue today. What do you think? You know, at first we thought it was normal, but then we're like, mm, something is a little off. So a lot of people, they're in denial. Um, they have a fear of what others would say, and they're afraid of their kids, uh, being labeled and that's one of the like when you I talk I've spoken or I would speak to a lot of families that um you know have kids who are on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. or have ASD uh and that's one of the things they say they're they're afraid of their kids being labeled you know what I mean and as I said that word disability people say it a lot and people they don't like that it's a big no-no in the autism community mm -hmm. so um you know it it's just it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. What advice would you give to a current Mackenzie High School, um, like a former student in alumni, obviously, that has a kid with uh, autism? What, what would your advice be from a mother to a mother to that individual? To that person? Yeah. I would say jump on it immediately because mm -hmm. we lived in a state that, you know, <laughs> we lived in a state that didn't I mean they recognize autism mm -hmm. but they didn't have a they didn't have any resources mm -hmm. and that's so my my son was actually diagnosed when he was three years and two months mm -hmm. because we were going to a family doctor and he wasn't in a pediatric practice right. you, you always you go first thing you do is you talk to your pediatrician Right. And then it'll refer you to a developmental pediatrician because you do mm -hmm. need that. That's right. the first step. And the, the second step is to go and get your child diagnosed because the earlier you do so, the better it'll be for you. I guarantee you. Right. My, you know, as I said, he was diagnosed when he was three years and, and two months. And mm -hmm. he did not get early intervention. You need oh. EI to get them ready for the next step whether your kid is having a speech delay or speech issues, they have occupational issues, you know, fine motor skills, you know, kids, they grow, they, they, their fine motor skills gets better. In my son's case, he had to have OT because he didn't have that grasp. You know, kids, they grasp their pens or their pencils. His grasp was different. So you need that. You need early intervention so that your kids will be prepared for the, the, their school life, whether it be kindergarten or preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school. You need that. You always, you know, you jump on it immediately. And that's what I did. I advocated for my child. Um, 
and I will always be his advocate. I mean, prior to him being diagnosed, we have to hire an advocate because I had no idea. But you always, always, you try to advocate for your child because you are that child's parents and you know your child best. So you always, you know, say mama bear, that's what I am. I'm a big bear <laughs> for my kids. So my advice to you would be, you definitely jump on it immediately. As I said, we're all in denial, you know, where we all fear our kids getting labeled. People tease, like, I kid you, perfect example if we have the time. I would talk to a lot of parents who, you know, who we're, are we have our ASD community. And a lot of parents would say things like, I remember one um, mother said to me, she's like, they're on the playground playing. Her son was having a very difficult day. And kids with autism, they do. They have difficult days. And mm -hmm. I had difficult days as well. I said, I, I would jokingly say one, you know, a couple of times, you know, Walmart could, could have possibly hired me before because my kid literally like mopped himself on like, mopped the floor with him with his body because he was having a temper tantrum and that's what they do they're impulsive um they're irrational you know and 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 you have to 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 recognize that and you know the mother was saying to me that her child was actually um you know like people made fun of him, all the parents, because she, uh, she was trying to console her child, be empathetic, you know, that's one of the things with having a child with special needs, you have to be, you have to have empathy, that's the key, you have to put yourself in that child's position, because you just never know, you, it, it's a neurological issue, so you, do, you don't know what's going on in, 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 in that little head of theirs, so, um, but anyways, the parents, you know, said that another parent came to her, and she said, you know, she was trying to, to calm her child down. And the parent came to her and, and said, you know, um, your kid was pushing my child and, 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 and et cetera. And she said to her, you know, I'm so sorry, but my son is on the autism spectrum. He has ASD and he's mm -hmm. having a very difficult time. Right. And um, the mother said, oh, you should keep your child at home then if he has issues. So things like that people say because they're not empathetic, right? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't tell you what the mother's response was. It's, it, this program is not censored. So <laughs> it was hard. It was just because it was, it was tough on her. And mm -hmm. people go through a lot of things like that where, you know, kids, are, they say, oh, does your kid, is your kid artistic or your kid a musical genius? Or, you know, um, you know, your kid does not look like they're on the autism spectrum. I mean, what does autism look like, right? Like, what does it look like? Um, or uh, God doesn't give you more what you can handle, or it, it happens to the best, or, you know, stuff like that. We in the autism community, we just like stuff like that. You know, we're not looking for sympathy, but we're looking for support. And that's what people need to do. They need to support each other. Whether mm -hmm. your kid is on the spectrum or your kid is a neurotypical kid, you need to support each other. And that's why I would say to my fellow students, if your kids, you know, if you notice that your child is displaying these behaviors, you should definitely seek help because early intervention is the key. Support groups are amazing. I have a support group for people that, you know, parents that need help. Mm -hmm. um, I am great with IEPs, that's individualized education plans. I'm amazing mm -hmm. with them. You have any questions, you can reach out to me. I don't have an issue. I, I'm very busy, but I will make time for you if you need to reach out. I, as I said to you, I'm very comfortable about talking about autism because I know what it's like, you know, um, and I'm an open book. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I will be willing to help you um, throughout that journey. Very good. This, this, this is actually very, um, it's slightly different for me because um, a few days ago, uh, one of my coworkers was telling this story. Um, how he was uh, trying to fill a prescription in um, a drugstore. And he was um, actually in deep thought. He was looking at, I think it was Tylenol or some kind of painkiller. He, he was uh, in the quest of, of um, soliciting from the store. And uh, he was looking at the different types and he's trying to figure out, should I get capsule or tablets or should I get the 24 or 12? So he was in deep thought and he was actually looking at the price points and trying to get best value for his money, obviously. And he said all of a sudden he felt something hit him in the side of his head. And when he looked around, he noticed... I guess he put his head down on the ground. When he raised his head up, as he was raising his head to see who, 
who hit him or what hit him, he notices was a much larger um, young person, um, about 350 pounds, he says, over six foot tall. And um, before he could have said anything to the, the, the person that hit him, he, he heard a, a lady come running. What did you do? What did you do? Oh my God, what happened? You know? And, and, and uh, he, he, he asked me, you know, how we should handle it. And I, I said, you know what? Obviously, um, you, you got to be empathetic, like you said. You got to realize that um, the, the child needs help. And, and obviously, the mom wasn't, I guess, paying attention. And some right. reason, yep. he, you know, he got out of her care. But I says, just, just think about it as if um, put yourself in the mom's position. What would you do if you had a kid that was autistic and somehow escaped and, and hit and hit someone else. So I, I, I think that's where I left it because I'm not comfortable in my skin to talk about it because obviously I don't know much. And I appreciate you taking the time to share with us your experience and making yourself available to talk to whoever um, is in need of uh, having a conversation regarding this topic. Thank you very much for doing that. I yeah, really you're welcome. And, and you know, your coworker, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it just, things like that happen. And, you know, my young, when I look back at my young self, I mean, I actually, I've, you know, gone into stores, you know, as I said, it's, it's very, um, it, it, there is a lot of awareness, autism awareness now. And I remember, you know, as I said, my young self going, my younger self going mm -hmm. into stores and I would see things. And I, 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 I'm one of those people, I'm not going to lie, not, not perfect, where I've judged people, you know, I'm like, oh, that kid, you know, is bad parenting or, you know, um, the kid, as we say in Guyana, they have no manners, you know, or, or we always, as a thing, we always, a lot of times we always blame the parents, but we just never like, you know, dig deep and just to see what that issue is, you know, because as you know, everyone has got a story. And with that kid, he, his story is that he has ASD. He, um, he is impulsive. People with autism have to have, um, they have to have therapy to control, you know, their emotions and, and the, the impulsiveness and stuff like that. Um, you know, people would ask me, you know, can someone grow out of autism? They can't. It's something that's going to be, it's a lifelong, uh, a lifelong part of you, like something that it's not going to, you can't grow out of it, but you can actually suppress it. You can, you can control it by, you know, therapy and then therapy helps because guess what my son is almost 10 and again you would never know and again what does autism look like right you just would never know until something happens and he just he can't control it anymore and, and mm -hmm. you know but again it's all about support you do you need that support you need to talk to people because it's not going to go away it's not going to go away it's going to get a little better because, you know, as I said, therapy, the support is great, you know, resources, but it's not going to, it's not going to go away. It's something that's always going to be there. And we as parents, we as people, you know, we need to encourage each other. We need to support each other. You know, I've had family members um, who have asked us not to return to their homes mm. just because my son displayed behaviors and they said that they understood him, but in the end, they didn't, right? So unfortunately, he was asked not to return to their homes just because of his behavior. But it's okay, you know. Um, we just, we know what we have to deal with. It's a daily thing. Like, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, so we as parents, we just support him and do whatever is necessary. And we live in an area, fortunate for us, you know, autism is number one, you know, priority here. And they um they go above and beyond for kids that's on the spectrum and kids with you know um special needs in in a whole so i'm i'm fortunate that we were able to live in a community that is aware and um you know we have unlimited resources here so Shayan, thank you for highlighting the um the you know and, and touching on the concept of uh, and explaining more what autism is to you and 
um, explain in a little bit of detail to um, obviously people of you. And, and I'm grateful that you've agreed to make yourself available to at w whenever you have time to accommodate people if they wish to talk. Definitely, um, you know, and, and again, you know, it, it's all about confidentiality and I, I'm, I'm not, I'm no judge here, you know, I mean, eventually I want to be an attorney, but <laughs> I'm no judge. So please, you know, you reach out to me um, and we can talk, you know, you, I just send me a message on Facebook. You can find me. I have all these last names, but everyone knows me as either Cheyenne Obermuller, <laughs> Cheyenne Albert, Cheyenne Walsh now because I'm married. Yeah. Um, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. You know, if you think that your kid is on the spectrum and you're, you don't want to talk to any professionals or, you know, you just want to talk to someone, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. Um, just reach out. Be, don't be a stranger. I'll make a statement, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to, it's not a question. I'll, I'll just make a statement and hopefully you can probably disagree or, or, or agree with me. I think it's sad. The sad reality is um, when we went to school, there probably were people with special. They were. I mean, in high school and, but the thing is, I can, I can tell you right now, like when I was in primary school, yeah. elementary school, there was a particular kid. Um, I can remember off the top of my head who I think now was on the spectrum. I'm no medical professional, but I can tell you from what I'm seeing now with other kids and in, in, with my, my son, he definitely was on the spectrum. Um, but again, back then there wasn't an awareness. People didn't like, they, they didn't know, you know, there were many names for people who was, was, you know, ex ex um, they, they, they appear to be different or whatever, you know what I mean? People tease them. And, and I, I'm not going to lie. I'm one of those people that did tease the kid because I thought he was different. You know what I mean? But then that was the young me. That was like, what the eight, nine year old me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any better. We mm -hmm. all didn't know any better, but now it's, you know, there's awareness, um, it's out there, you know, we, we all know about autism, like, even the littlest kid would know about autism, you know what I mean? Um, so now we can help people like that. And it just, it's unfortunate that, you know, we never realize these things. And but now we can say that this person was on the spectrum, and, and we can help them or, or, or we can help whoever, like, you know, like now, we can help people now, because we know that that's, this is what it is, and you could pinpoint these um, behaviors and stuff like that, so. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, if you were to recommend someone for your show, for our show, who would that person be? And I think we've done about nine or ten interviews, I, uh, I haven't been keeping track, but which one would you say was your favorite so far and why? I actually like the, the the interview with Niosi Brown. Okay. okay. I really did. I like the interview with Gordon as well. Gordon um Gordon Robinson <laughs> mostly. Gordon and I actually went to um we went from uh kindergarten to the University of Guyana together. And Andrew, you and I went to kindergarten. Yeah. We all did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Niosi's interview was really powerful. She had a lot of like positive things to say. And the fact that she's a teacher and it's so awesome that she gets to travel the world. You know, like me, we got to travel. In her case, you know, but, you know, she's living in um in in um the continent of Africa. So she gets yeah. to visit a lot of African countries, mm -hmm. but I get to visit a lot of places because my husband travels a lot for work. Mm -hmm. So we get to visit places with him. I mean either it be whether it be local or international, but we get to accompany him on trips and stuff like that. But I love the fact that she can do that and um you know she is she's a teacher and, and teachers are very important. Um, they instill a lot in our kids. And, you know, um, the thing about it is that we know now how it, even more there, you know, now with the, the, with COVID, they're so, um, they're so important, yeah. you know, because without teachers, like our kids, they wouldn't develop, they wouldn't mm -hmm. learn, you know, and, and I, I'm, I was really impressed uh, with that interview. So she described the world as one large, play field that needs to be explored. Yeah. Very, very nice interview. Who would you recommend, recommend next to be on this show if I were to give you... Uh, who I would recommend next? To recommend My somebody. bestest friend in the whole wide world. 
Mrs. Oviana Hamilton Dumay. <laughs> okay, okay, very good, very good. We want her to come on. We want to hear mm -hmm. about her. <laughs> I was in conversation with her briefly, and and I, I think she did. Um, oh, you 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 did get it. Oh, awesome! Yay! <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't done the interviews yet, but we are in conversation to. Oh, to, nice. Maybe I can cajole her. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. <laughs> that be. I can. I can. You know, pull a few strings, I guess. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would love to hear from her. Uh, you know, see her on your show. And I'm sure you would love to hear from her as well. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be great. It'll be nice to have her. Um, I know we're just up against time. Can you tell us um, what do you think we can do as a group or as a little organization, if I may, um, to influence change in the life of a current McKenzie High School student? I think it's fair to say that um, we, it goes without saying, we don't have any uh, working relationship established with McKenzie High School, but I think in the interim, um, if we can partnership, I, I know Gordon Mosley was on, the MP was on, um, I saw Walton, and uh, we had the, so the mayor of Linden is scheduled to be on soon. Um, there's a lot of good names working. Um, what would your recommendation be uh, for us to do as a group to influence change of a, in, a, in the life of a current McKenzie High School student? Um, I listened to Gordon's interview and I know he had mentioned something about um, a tablet drive. Mm -hmm. So I actually had, um, I, someone had, um, you know, approached me and ask me to purchase some tablets for McKenzie High. Um, and I did, and you know, this year I did um, donate some tablets. Very I don't good. mind doing it, to be honest with you. Um, I can do it, you know, annually, that's not a problem. Mm. Um, also, I was, you know, I would, I would suggest um, some kind of stationary drive. Um, you know, stationary, around this time of the year here in, you know, the U.S., it, they're not expensive. You know, we can all pool monies and they, we can have like one point per, per uh, person of contact or point person. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they can shop, you know, do the shopping and, you know, send a barrel and, you know, uh, send it to a contact person at McKenzie High, you know, teacher, whether it be the assistant principal, the principal, whoever it is and um, donate it, like, you know, they can distribute it to the kids. Because I know someone, one of my mom's former um, uh, co-worker, they, they're, there's a, they have a big drive that they do yearly, um, but that's for the Linden community. But okay. we definitely need to do something for McKenzie, the McKenzie High School community. And I think that would be great um, to do that annually. Because, I mean, as I said, things are not that expensive. And people, you know, we have a lot of people here who I know can afford it. And mm -hmm. they can, you know, contrib contribute um, monies. And we can definitely make it work. I mean, I don't mind being that person because I, you know, I send, you know, I send barrels. I do stuff like that every year. Um, so I don't think, I honestly, I don't think that will be an issue for me. I, I would definitely help out as much as I can. I could be that, that point person. So I appreciate that. Just to respond to you. Um, I, I, I know we have sent out an MOU and an expression of interest to develop a working relationship with McKenzie High School. Um, we have heard back from them in terms of doing some edits to the paperwork, but in terms of a formal response, I don't know that there's one established. I think it's fair to say we are in a relationship with the school, but there isn't a marriage. So There's on, a marriage. So it's like an engagement or right. not that level just yet. Right. So we are in the in, in the process of courting. We are having conversation. Uh, I remain hopeful that uh, they will sign on with someone. It being us or it being another group or whatever, but I think it will probably be the best interest of the students of the school right. if someone from the administration can consider um, developing a working relationship with someone of this major stakeholders, it being us or whoever it is, I'm prepared to work with them, but I, I'm not gonna do anything until I get that 
marks certification, if I may. Right, and that's that. That'll be your safe bet. Um, and as I said, if you guys want me to help you, just let me know, and I will make the time. I, you know, I'm a stay-at-home parent, but I have my own business, and I also mm -hmm. take care of a child that has special needs, and I have a neurotypical developing kid as well. So I, 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 I'm very busy, but I don't mind taking the time to help my former school because you know Mackenzie High School. You know, I'm very proud to say that I'm a former student of Mackenzie High. I chose Mackenzie High. I wrote come entrance. I, I, you know, I gained a, a spot at, at St. Joseph, but I didn't go. I went to Mackenzie High for a reason, and I will give back my all because I know they give their all to me. So I would love to give out my all to Mackenzie High and for the students that's there. So. Nice to say. I think we'll leave it there. Shine Walsh. On behalf of the Mackenzie School Alumni Association North American Chapter, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you very much for sitting down and sharing some time with us. Appreciate your insight, your feedback, and your recommendation as always. God bless you. Stay safe. Please extend our love to your kids, especially your young boy and your husband. Thank you very much, Andrew. It was a pleasure being a part of this show. I'm so grateful that you reached out to me and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very, very much. God bless you too as well, my friend. Take care. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.